Good morning, everybody. It's nice to, to be able to have this tool to interact with everybody today. So um, I welcome to Business Tools to Survive a Pandemic. Um, today we are going to be talking about, we have a few speakers. Um, first speaker is going to be Dave Rimmick, um, the Executive Director of the Alexandria Arlington Workforce Investment Council. He's got a new grant opportunity out and he'll talk a little bit about to help um, businesses retain workers and also he'll be giving a little overview about how employees can access employment benefits and then we'll also be hearing from david hinkapi of the uh, economic development specialist with the small business administration who'll be talking about kind of walking you through how to apply a disaster loan so we'll kick it to them here in a momentarily um a few housekeeping items you know this is a live and recorded webinar so if you're not able to attend the entire thing we will have it recorded and we will post it up um later uh, at bizlaunch.org the other um thing is if you have a question you should see on your screen a little um a little uh raise your hand or ask a question feature um, you can type that in and after each speaker, we will be answering your questions in real time. So without further ado, um, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Remick, um, who will talk a little bit about um, his new grant opportunity as well as unemployment. Take it away, Dave. Thanks, Alex. Uh, as Alex said, my name is David Remick and I serve as the Executive Director of the Alexander Arlington Regional Workforce Council. We are a cross-jurisdictional workforce convener attached to Arlington County's Department of Human Services. Several times a year, we bring employers, educators, and job seekers together to identify and explore the opportunities that will help stimulate successful recruitment efforts. And we manage a few uh, funding streams that allow us to support the skilling up and credentialing of job seekers for in-demand occupations in our region. These funded services are implemented through our two American job centers, the Alexandria uh, Workforce Development Center uh, and the Arlington Employment Center, which can be accessed virtually at aec.arlingtonva.us. We provide a variety, uh, excuse me, we provide various services to employers as well, uh, from access to real-time labor market information, to promoting job opportunities through our network of uh, job seekers and holding individual and large-scale recruitment events we're always working uh, to help our regional workforce, especially in times of need. Over the past week, tens of thousands of Virginians were laid off. And uh, this morning, uh, it was announced that during the same time period, over 3 million Americans lost their jobs and filed for unemployment insurance. It's no shock to anyone that this health crisis is crippling our region and our national economy. So how can we help Arlington's businesses? First, if you are or have laid off staff, please have them apply for unemployment insurance online at vec.virginia.gov backslash unemployment, unemployed, excuse me. Let me repeat that again, vec.virginia.gov backslash unemployed. This is the fastest way for these affected workers to apply for unemployment insurance. Next, I'd like to tell you about our emergency layoff aversion assistance program. Our governor last week authorized $87,619 of grant funding uh, to the Alexander Arlington Regional Workforce Council to help support employers eligible to remain open during the COVID-19 emergency. On Monday at 5 p.m., we will be awarding, uh, this coming Monday at 5 p.m., we'll be awarding 11 grants of up to $7,500 each to Alexander City and Arlington County businesses who can retain the largest number of staff. Our overall goal for this program is to save as many jobs as possible in Alexander City and Arlington County. These grant funds can be used for innovative strategies to maintain business operations, including, uh, but importantly, not limited to, hiring a cleaning service or sanitation service to uh, uh, clean your facility. Uh, the purchase of software and online programs that employees uh, would need to use from home to support their work. The purchase of remote access supplies, including laptop computers, or, and or snap, uh, smartphones, iPhones, uh, which the employees would need to use from home to support their work. It's important to note that uh, the total cost equipment of the total cost of equipment must be under five thousand for application, five thousand dollars for application consideration. Let me say it again: 
total cost of equipment must be under $5,000 for application consideration. Uh, another example is the purchase of an online sales platform to sell services virtually so that existing staff roles can be repurposed uh, for order of fulfillment. I do want you to know that unfortunately these funds cannot be used to directly pay the wages of employees. As you see, the website is up, workforcecouncil.arlingtonva.us backslash COVID-19, uh, offers complete details for this grant opportunity as well as its online application. Applications will be accepted until 5 p.m. tomorrow, March 27th. Here's a few more details that I wish to share about this program. Participating, participating businesses uh, can be for-profit or non-profit organizations. They have to be located in Alexander City and Arlington County, and they have to have 250 or fewer employees. This is more of a small business uh, program. Application requests shall not exceed $7,500. Obviously, smaller requests are uh, encouraged. Uh, people are taking less money than we might be able to award more than 11 grants. Uh, each grant will be a reimbursable grant, meaning that the employer will provide uh, the Regional Workforce Council with an invoice and copies of all receipts spent on implementing their program. The county will reimburse, excuse me, uh, the council will reimburse uh, over, uh, one more time, the council will reimburse 100% of these costs to the employer. So we're not directly handing out money, we're reimbursing uh, for cost of your efforts. Uh, your projects may make use of other funding sources and leverage resources. These are anything that you bring to the table to help save your um, employees' jobs. Uh, it's not required, but it's uh, nice to know uh, what you might be bringing to the table. Decisions for funding approval will be made by March 30th, 2020 at 5 p.m., if not sooner and grants will be awarded again to the applicants who can save the largest number of jobs. Now, I know that this grant can not support all the businesses and save all the jobs. And I'm working with the state to see if and when we can receive additional funds. But I do hope that this uh, additional grant opportunity can help uh, some of our local businesses. And with that, I uh, leave the door open to any questions. Dave, one question I had um, was about unemployment. We, you know, we've been getting a lot of questions from small business owners. Am I, I'm, yeah, I have 1099 employees. We're a fitness studio. We have to shut down. Can yeah. my 1099 get unemployment? The rules for unemployment have been changing a little bit uh, over the past uh, week or so. They're becoming a little bit more relaxed to deal with this emergency. I would say that the best thing to do is to uh, tell your employees to uh, access the VEC, the Virginia Employment Commission. Uh, on the website, I have uh, information right here. They do have a, uh, a, a call center. Uh, the call center, there's long waits. Uh, it's 866-832-2363, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, but I would encourage everybody, um, just have your employees uh, go online and register for unemployment, vec.virginia.gov backslash, backslash, excuse me, unemployed. That's the best way to get uh, these questions answered, because again, things change. Congress uh, is in the process of passing uh, some changes right now that might affect how we dole out this money. And so I don't want to give a specific uh, uh, as a third party. I think uh, the best that we can do is have everybody go and uh, to apply. Wonderful, thank you. So we have another question. Are there any specific things for nonprofits to consider in the emergency layoff aversions assistance program? Or all the terms to know identical for nonprofits and for profits companies? Yeah, I mean, a business is a business. Whether you're in for profit or nonprofit, uh, you know, what we're looking at is how many positions can you be saved? And so if you're a employer, whether you're, again, you're a for profit or nonprofit, and you may have to make a tough decision of laying some staff off. If you had $7,500, what can you do to change your operations so that you can keep those individuals? Um, there are uh, 
organizations that are looking at teleworking uh, that might not have been set up for teleworking previously. Um, and so, you know, if they're back off of staff in a nonprofit and, and they were told uh, you can't come into work because of, of the emergency uh, and they don't have a computer at home, well, that could be a, a situation where you could potentially lay somebody off. But if you were able to use these funds to purchase a computer and to purchase the teleworking applications uh, and Microsoft and things of that nature so they can continue their work at home, well, then you saved a job. Terrific, thank you. The other question we had, and I think you answered this in your presentation, but um, the maximum size of the grant that a business can receive is $7,500, is that correct? That's correct, $7,500. Uh, uh, again, uh, none of that money can go to pay staff directly uh, or to pay staff salaries, excuse me. Um, and obviously, uh, it'd be great if people um, investigated exactly what would be uh, the proper course of action uh, to help save these jobs and whatever that true cost is, apply for that true cost, especially if it's uh, less than $7,500. Because then we can use the, the leftover money to see if we can form, uh, see if we can award a 12th grant, potentially a 13th grant. And we have about uh, 25 uh, applications in right now, uh, and they span from $900 to $7,500. Uh, so hopefully we can award more than 11 uh, uh, grants. But as of right now, we are targeting 11 grant opportunities. Awesome. And I believe this is the final question. I am I'm the employee of my S Corp. Am I eligible for unemployment? I have been paying in, to, in it, but I am, I am the only principal of my corporation. Thanks. How do you want to answer? Do you want to take that? Yeah, Dave? I mean, I, I, the, 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 in, my community, in my conversations with the Virginia Employment Commission, uh, and especially with their local uh, managers, just have everybody contact uh uh the virginia employment commission at vec dot virginia dot gov backslash unemployed hey i did it right the first time uh, right there uh because again these things change all the time if you're a if you are paying into the system for unemployment insurance and in the escort uh you are uh, considered an employee of your business then you should but i can't give you that definite answer and also some of these answers are going to change uh as uh the days and weeks go on because the government federal government is trying to uh put more money into the uh unemployment insurance system so that we can support the three million plus individuals that have just uh filed for um unemployment insurance so go online file uh that is my best uh, course of action for each of you terrific thank you um well without do thank you, Dave. We um, feel free to keep asking your questions. Um, we can come back at the end, but I wanted to make sure. I know a lot of people were very interested in this. Um, we're going to turn it over to David Hinkapi, um, who's going to be talking about um, how to um, how to um, get your disaster loan. What I think is your need for your application. Um, so he's going to be talking a little bit about that. But keep your Keep putting your questions in, and we can answer the rest at the end. So, thank you so much for your um, for your presentation, Dave. Um, we really look forward to this resource. You know, one of the things that we have seen and hearing from businesses is that they're very concerned about how do I maintain my staff during this time. You know, I want to be able to make sure and take care of my employees. So, we decided to put this all together in one. Um, one um, topic because we thought it was so important. So with the SBA disaster loans, as well as um, your grant opportunity and unemployment. So thank you for taking the time. Um, terrific, how, how are you doing, Dave? Remi or uh, I'm all right. Um, should, I, should I put my, the, the PowerPoint into the full screen, you know, a slideshow mode? Or to make it yeah, if you visible? want to. I mean, we see, I see it okay. pretty well on my end. If anyone else is having okay. it, please. Please say something, but I think it's uh, I think it's looking really good the way it is now. So, all right. So um, my name is David Hinkapi. I'm an economic development specialist at the Washington Metro Area District Office of the SBA, and uh, we cover 
District of Columbia, Northern Virginia, the three counties in Northern Virginia, and also Prince George's and Montgomery counties in uh, Maryland. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, EIDLs, or EIDLs, as we call them as well. So I'll get straight into it. Uh, so we have uh, low interest, uh, long term, up to 30 year uh, uh, disaster loans for working capital um, for organizations who have suffered some economic injury as a result of the pandemic, right? Um, now, this is, uh, these are for small businesses, small agricultural cooperatives and aquaculture businesses, as well as private nonprofit organizations, regardless of size. I'll define what that is. A private nonprofit organization is a nonprofit that is also non-government. So, uh, for instance, a state college, a city university, a, a county hospital, those are all government nonprofits. So as long as it's a private nonprofit, a non-government nonprofit, then they qualify for the economic injury disaster loans. Uh, and we'll have a chance for questions at the end. So I'm gonna go through this quickly. Um, what are some types of organizations that are ineligible? Religious organizations, so if it's a nonprofit that's connected to the Lutheran church or some other religion, then it's, it's not eligible. Charitable organizations, they're not eligible. Gambling concerns, they're not eligible. Uh, real estate, lending or investment concerns, except for real estate investments that are held for rental. So if the business is an LLC that owns a building and rents out spaces, uh, retail space to other uh, businesses, then that's, those are eligible, but not the ones that are designed uh, to uh, develop the property and then sell the units in the property or whatever. That kind is not eligible. Um, Okay, how much can I borrow? Eligible entities may qualify for up to two million. Doesn't mean you'll get two million, up to two million per business. The interest rates are 3.75% for small businesses, 2.75% for nonprofit organizations. The terms are up to 30 years, and the first payment is due 12 months after the funds are issued. So it's a 12 month deferment on the payment. It's not a grant, it's a 12 month deferment on the first payment. Interest does accrue during that first year, but you don't have to make the first payment until 12 months after. How can I use these? Okay, these are working capital loans that can be used to pay fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, other bills, notes payable, things like that, that could have been paid had the disaster not occurred. So it's intended to help you stay afloat during the declared disaster and ready to restart your operations once circumstances allow. EIDLs are not meant for business expansion. So if you were planning on expanding your business, whatever that is, and you were gonna make some kind of purchase or capital investment to expand the business, and then this happened, you can't use the money for this, right? General loan approval criteria. You have to have a credit history acceptable to the SBA. It doesn't have to be an 800 credit score, but it has to have, be acceptable to the SBA. Get into some details. You might have questions about that later. We'll get to that in a moment. Repayment ability. We have to determine that the applicant business has the ability to repay the economic injury disaster loan. So generally speaking, the way we do that is we're going to want to see the tax returns for the business from the previous year to have an idea of what your profitability and what your income and what the taxes you paid were. Overall, in general, the point is to get a good financial picture of the business in the year before the emergency happened so that we can calculate what is, how much working capital do you need, right? So it's not a projection of the working capital you're gonna need from for the next six months while the emergency is possibly on, it's what was your working capital needs normally under normal circumstances. And it's gonna be a loan for six months of that working capital. Eligibility. You must be physically located in a disaster designated area and have suffered working capital losses due to the declared disaster. And right now that's every county in every state is a disaster designated area for these loans. The collateral requirements. Um, no collateral required for the first $25,000 of the loan. But anything over that, whatever you have for collateral, that we can use for collateral, you must be willing to pledge whatever you have. 
So an easy example would be a gym owner. Uh, you know, the exercise equipment, that's not very good collateral, but you got to be willing to put it up, right? It's that simple. Whatever you have as collateral, you have to be willing to put it up. The SBA takes real estate as collateral when it is available. So you have to be willing to take a lien on it. We don't care if we're fifth or sixth or seventh position on in, in it. But as long as you are willing to take a lien on it, then that's enough. We will not decline a loan for lack of collateral, but we require borrowers to pledge what is available. So given the severity of the pandemic, the SBA will make reasonable efforts to work with applicants toward a favorable decision, right? We understand, right? That's why the terms are so generous, up to 30 years and the interest rate is so slow. Okay, so we urge everyone to have a complete application upfront before submitting online. So that you can get the you, so print out the paper forms, go through the paper forms, fill them out in pencil or whatever, like make a first draft, have it ready to go when you're going to do the online application. Now, as of last night, the online application website was down because the IT team was doing improvements because we've been overwhelmed. We've had a tsunami of applications, so we're strengthening it, and as soon as it's ready to go, it's going to come back. Uh, online and I'll have some alternatives for where you can mail in a paper application if you want to do that. Let's talk about that more in a moment. Okay, if your application is incomplete, we're going to set it aside because you can imagine we're going to have loan officers who retired from banks or from the SBA and we're going to surge capacity. We're going to hire them for two weeks, come help us fill out these uh, process these applications. So we're going to sit someone down at a desk put a stack of applications in front of them and say, go to it. If your application is incomplete, they're going to set it aside and go to the next one. And then at the end of the day, they're going to get to yours and say, what is David missing? David is missing this and this. Great. Let's send him an, a, a notice through the application website on the dashboard. And then however long David takes to give us the information, that's when he gets back in the queue. So don't do that. Take an extra 15 or 30 minutes to do the application right the first time so that you stay in the queue. For specific help, this is the phone number, and that is also the customer service email line. As you can imagine, they're not going to be able to answer your email in two hours. So you're going to give them, give them a day. Um, so click, click here, and I'm going to send this to uh, Alex so he can uh, put this out to people. Uh, this is where you uh, do the electronic application, but as I said, that's down as of last night. Uh, this morning, early in the morning, it was down. I don't know if it's up right now. There is an alternative that I'll get to. So this is what it looks like. I want to give you an idea, and I'll go through it quickly, but this is what it looks like. Circle there is where you apply. Apply online. First, you register, right? You create a username. You create a password. Then you log in. Here's page one. Da okay, so here's the tip about downloading the paper forms first, right? So these is, this is where you're going to do the paper forms, get them all down. Form 5C, that's for a sole proprietor. Form 5, that's for everybody else. These are all the things that you're going to need to do. This is the uh, IRS Form 4506T. That is the request for uh, tax returns. There's an instructions for it. They have it in Spanish as well. SBA Form 2202, that's the schedule of liabilities. That's going to be a list of your liabilities, notes, payable, uh, no, accounts payable, notes, and mortgages, right? You don't have to use our form. You can use some other form. We do it as a convenience. You can use this form if it's easier for you to do that. But you can use some other schedule of liabilities that you print out from your QuickBooks or from whatever you do or your accountant can do it for you. That's fine. Uh, all right, so we're going back here to the website now. Uh, double click on, on the apply online. You're going to select here. Loan type is EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Don't apply for any of the others. Economic Injury Disaster Loan. All right, so you just follow your nodes there, right? You just get on the website, start filling in the information that it asks. You're going to be transferring hopefully information from the printed form that you've already done 
transfer it into the electronic application and you go through there. Save your data frequently, because you can imagine this is a website, even once it's back on and once it's been strengthened and made more robust, thousands of applications. We already have more than 100,000 applications. I won't actually tell you the real number because you won't believe me. More than 100,000 applications we've already received. So save your work frequently. Okay. Um, you can get updates by going here. Information, there's a website uh, for information on SBA related, uh, coronavirus SBA related information. Okay, that's it. Now we can go to questions because I know you probably have them. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Hincapie. That was a great presentation and um, very timely, so thank you. We do have a few questions. Um, I'm going to kind of, Dave, if you could also pop back on as well. Some of them were for you, but um, Mr. Hincapie, these are um, specifically related to um, uh, SBA disaster loans. So here's the first one. We are a business that was planning to hire staff in this week, but have, had, have decided to postponed for several weeks before opening. Mm -hmm. We have started to fill up the SBA disaster form in, in the area that asks for number of employees. Should we not, should we note the number of potential employees we were originally planning to hire according to our business model, assuming we will continue to be at full capacity um, once this is over in the coming months? You have- All right. Yes, yeah, so, so remember the fundamental idea here. This is a working capital loan for six months of working capital based on normal operations before the disaster hit. So before the disaster hit, you didn't have these other employees you were going to hire. So no, this is, this is working capital based on normal operations before the disaster. Okay. Thank you. What about mm -hmm. for, Dave, the other question is around um, new businesses. What about for new business? What if you opened your business in 2019? Um, are you, would you still be eligible? What if you opened in 2020? I know a lot of people may be in that boat as well. If you opened in January 2020 or 2019, are you eligible to apply? You are eligible. And remember, always go back to the fundamental thing. We have to have some idea of what your normal working capital needs were. So let's say you opened on January 1st, 2020, and you had two months, January and February. Well, you don't have taxes for this yet. That's fine. But you've got to give us some financial information, right? So the schedule of liabilities that's going to help us because you're, maybe you're going to have a note payable for something. Maybe you have a mortgage or maybe you're going to have accounts payable already. So you need to give us enough information so we can make some reasonable calculation of what your working capital needs were for those two months. And then we're going to give you six months worth. So you should definitely apply. Perfect. Thank you. Our borrowers. Next question is our borrowers required to use personal real estate, such as their home, as collateral? Anything that is available as collateral, you have to be willing to put it up. Okay. The other question, this is also an SBA loan. Which tax return are you required to submit? Are you required to submit 2019 if it's already been submitted? Yes, if you have it. This happened in, yeah, this happened in the, the tax people were having right. filed yet. Um, yeah. Um, in, in the instructions, as you're following along, filling out the application, you're going to see, it's going to tell you. That's why I said, you know, you just kind of follow your nose. Go step block by block by block. And you're going to see what it's going to ask for. And so you just do it. That's why I say also, do the printed forms, read through it once, then do it in pencil. It pays to take an extra 15 or 30 minutes or even an extra hour to do it, go read through it, calm down. I know you're all under a lot of stress. Read through it, follow your nose, read through it so you understand, and then submit it because it's better to take an extra hour now than to lose a whole week 
at the back end if something is missing or wrong, right? But it's all there. It's very clear. And this was another SBA disaster relief phone. Um, I think you kind of answered it, but I, I think it's worth, you know, everyone's got a unique situations, you know, we're all mm -hmm. do this together. Um, for the SBA disaster relief loan, what if you are a new business and does not have a full year of previous tax returns? Business started in November 2019, for example. So do, if you have an end of year balance, it says if you have an end of year balance sheet and an income statement for the end of the year, right, you got it for November and December, we want to see that. Remember always the basic idea. We want to get a picture of the financial situation, normal operations of your business. If all you have is one month worth of information, give us one month of information. If you start, if you opened your doors on November 1st last year, 2019, give us two or three months, whatever you have. We need some information so that we can make a calculation of what your working capital needs. What will you need to be able to pay these fixed costs and debts to keep you open, to keep you alive for the next six months? Thank you. So, David, you mentioned that charitable organizations are not eligible for disaster loans. Include all 501c3 organizations? Well, here's the thing is they make it, they don't make a distinction. They don't use the tax code to talk about charitable organizations in the SBA. We don't talk about 501c3s and C4s and C6s. Charitable organizations, what they mean is like a, an organization that's primarily devoted to giving away money, right? So a 501c3 can be one of those organizations, but it can also be a 501c3 can also be just a nonprofit that provides advice and services and things like that. Like many of our SBDCs, small business development centers, are 501c3s. Um, you know, so they're a, they could be a private nonprofit, right? But it's charitable organizations mean the ones who are just set up primarily to give away money. Perfect. Sorry, just going through the questions here, if there is something else. Um, oh, that's very specific. Um, so just, just to clarify, so all for the disaster loans, all, all businesses within the United States are basically eligible to apply as of now, correct? Yes, if they're small businesses. Right. So it's and it's really regardless of where they're low, where they do business, they can all apply if they're small business. OK, there, right. Been a right. Because every on, every county, every state. OK. Yeah. There just been a lot of confusion around um, what, you know, um, exactly, exactly, you know, who where if your business is low location. So. Right. Um, this is interesting. Um, one of our one of the, the questions is um, an LLC has a 20% owner and is a non-resident alien with no SSN, Social Security number. What is required? Um, which is the required field? What do you in those situations? What do you do um, for businesses who may have a non-resident? Um, you know, if they if they are if they do not have a Social Security number, if a business owner does not. So a qualified alien is an alien who is lawfully admitted for permanent residence under the Immigration and Nationality Act, an alien who is granted asylum under Section 208 of that act, a refugee who is admitted to the United States under some section of that act, an alien who is paroled into the United States under some other section of that act, an alien whose deportation is being withheld under another section of that act, an alien who is granted conditional entry pursuant to another section. An alien who is a Cuban and Haitian entrant of the Refugee Education Assistance Act. Those are qualified aliens. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dave Rimick, are you still on? Because I think there were, we had a few questions that came up um, regarding the um, um, process. One was um, with the grant process, is it a rolling approval process or does everyone get reviewed, all the applicants get reviewed and approved by March um, 30th? It's the, the latter. 
So uh, deadline for applications is tomorrow, March 27th at 5 p.m. Uh, I've already received, as I said, you know, a little over 25 applications. Uh, we are putting them into a, a review grid, uh, all the information to re review grid, and there is a, a team uh, that will be reviewing these proposals over the weekend and on Monday. Uh, and again, uh, we're looking to award uh, the businesses that save the most number of jobs, uh, and that'll be announced uh, by 5 p.m. on Monday, if not sooner. So it's not rolling, it's just all in one shot. This is just, I'm gonna have you both, if you both wanna chime in, cause I think it's kind of a, um, both of you, your answer here. Um, the question is, do you know enough about the new bill being passed to tell us about the SBA loan grants for small business that will allow us to keep workers paid rather than laying them off? Well, I don't know anything about that. That just passed, I think, uh, the house yesterday and I, I haven't had a chance to look at it. I don't know what's in there. And also, it's not going to be anything the SBA deals with if it's with employees. Right. Okay. I mean, I I, uh, I reviewed a little bit of the uh, uh, bill earlier this morning. Again, it's, it's not been passed, so who's to say? Uh, but there looks to be a great number of opportunities for uh, businesses and for individuals that have been laid off. Uh, in that bill um and also know that there are you know this is the third i can't remember the exact terminology they were using but the third bill for covid but uh you know they're talking there might be a fourth and so you know they're doing everything that they can in the federal government to try to help um support individuals in, in, in times of emergency as well as to help prop up our economy sure and David Hinkabee, this is for you. Um, what do you recommend? Is it better to apply online or send it by the U.S. Postal Service? Okay, so I'm. I'm. Uh, so there is an email application. You can send in applications by email. I'm going to send that to you, so you can put it out to everyone. Um, Thank you. I just heard about this this morning, and I got a, a morning. I, I got an email. I'm looking at an email here now from um, uh, our office of field operations. Uh, there were issues with the website yesterday. Overnight, a workaround has been put in place. The website is up. If you get people calling or emailing that the website is down, clear the cache or cache on your computer, and the website will then should then be accessible. Uh, there are more updates on the website going to be done to deal with issues of capacity. But right now, you can access it, and there is a process for them to fill out EIDL applications safely. So let me tell you about the, the mail versus email and all this. While the website was down for several days, and I'll give everybody the option now that you know that. One way of doing it is you could overnight the application um, and send it to the address in Texas and, and you get in the queue. Now, just to give you the three options, there's the, the, the electronic loan application online, which seems to be working now with this workaround. There's also the email address, which I'm gonna give to Alex so he can put it out to everybody. And then there's also the paper application version here is one way in which the paper application version or the email version might be better for you. If you think your loan is going to be above 300,000, we, whenever a loan is above 300,000 for the six months, we're going to ask for more information. We're going to have to take a deeper look into your financials. Obviously, the businesses that have only been open for four or five months, their loan is not going to be that big. But if you've been in business for a lot longer and you think you're going to have more, you, you, you should know up front, we're going to ask for more information. So we're going to send you a notice saying, hey, send us this. Send us three years of financials or whatever, two years or whatever. One way to avoid that pause is to just do the application with the additional information included on paper and overnight it in. So that way, if loan processor Alex is looking at this and says, oh, this, yeah, the calculation into loan is gonna be 400,000. Let me ask him for different in, extra information. Oh, wait a minute, here it is. It's right at the back of the, of the packet. Oh, they've got the extra information. I don't need to stop. Is that clear, Alex? You see what I'm saying? Yes. Thank you, yeah, right. thank you. Right, if you were to do it the electronic way, you're gonna send in your stuff, 
we're going to look at it and we're going to go, oh, this is $450,000 loan by our calculation. We're going to have to ask, ask, ask for information. Let me send Alex an email. Alex, send me this stuff. That slows it down a few hours or maybe a day. I don't know. So we were advising people when the website was down, overnight it by paper with everything. If you think you're going to be above $300,000 loan and you can do the same thing with email, just send everything, right? Send the extra financials. If you're going to be under 300,000, you'll be fine. And the vast majority of people are going to be under 300,000 for those first six months. Uh, one last detail unless there's more questions, um, you can increase the amount, you can request an increase if you think you should get more, or you can extend it. You can increase an increase at the end of the six months if the, if the emergency is still going on, you know? Right. That's an option. Okay, and, and kind of on that same vein, we had a question, are there any extensions of deferment for current, um, um, yes. the, uh, current SBA loans? Yes. Every SBA lender, if it's like, say, a 7A loan or a 504 loan, has unilateral authority to do a deferment on the payments. So you just have to call them up and say, hey, can you do that for me? Many of them are already offering it. <laughs> you know, they're already telling their borrower. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, and then there was another, one of the final questions was, is there a particular credit score that you're looking for for borrowers to have to be able to qualify? No, there isn't a particular credit score. What we're going to look at is the cash flow of the business. Okay. We are going to look at the credit score, but what, but what matters is can the business demonstrate that they were generating cash flow so that we think they can pay back the loan under normal operations, not your cash flow. Now we know it's low. Now we know that's why you need the loan. It's under normal operations. Right. Yeah, and then we, we just had for general uh, sole proprietors, and I think you kind of answered this. Um, with sole proprietors that their business, you know, they had to shut down, whether it's their personal trainers or something like that, they could use, um, you know, these for working capital, correct? Yes, precisely. You just have to demonstrate it. You know, the only problem for like gig workers, as, as people call them now, or for or for um, independent contractors and things like that. The problem for them is it's not that they're not eligible. It's just that a lot of people who work that way aren't very good at keeping records. Right. As I said, we have to have a picture of your financial situation. If you haven't been keeping good records so we can look at it and go, oh, this is your normal cash flow, then we can't make an estimate of what your six months of working capital that we can give you as a loan will be. So it really is on what records you have that can show to us what's your normal circumstances cash flow. Right. Okay. And then that was pretty much all the questions. I mean, one general thing that I noticed um, from, from just the, the general questions, a lot of people have very specific questions relating to their individual business. Um, is mm -hmm. there... The SBA offer like a customer support line that, you know, you, I think you might have had one. Does, is that a service the SBA offers? Yeah, there is a customer support line by email. That's the one that I said that they're probably getting a whole lot of questions right now. So you got to give them a moment, give them a day, maybe two days to get back to you. There's a phone number as well. You can imagine how many questions you're getting. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, um, Dave Remick and Dave Hincapie. This is a you know very valuable resource um, to it, and you know we're all we're all facing these kind of unprecedented times, and we're all getting through this together. So I appreciate you taking the time, um, attendees. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found this um, a valuable. Um, you should have access. I believe my colleague uploaded the presentation um, to the um, chat feature, so you should be able to download this. Immediately. If not, I will send out a note to all attendees um, with the slides as well as the recorded presentation so you have this and can refer back at a later date. So again, we thank you for joining us. Um, keep following up with us. You know, you know, we're trying to get out, you know, Tara, myself, and Lourdes, we're all trying to get out information to the business community in a timely fashion. You know, we, we're using our Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, 
email. So if you're not getting information with us, join, go to bizlaunch.org, sign up for our email, follow us on, on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, you know, really try to get, make sure we get, there's a lot of scams going on right now. Make sure the businesses are getting the reputable information in a timely fashion. So again, bizlaunch.org for more information. Um, we thank you for joining us today and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Take care, y'all. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, David. Thanks, Alex. Thank you all.